Science number 10, we have an assassination warning from the year 4932. Apex TV, as you'll soon discover, are the gift that keep on giving. They make paranormal videos and are basically a conspiracy theorist wet dream. In December 2017, they published an audio clip purportedly sent in to them by a time traveler from the year 4932. How did the time traveler reach them in the first place? By email, apparently. 30 years ago, we were sending posts, but apparently in 2009, years time, we're still sending emails. I'm actually just gonna say straight up we won't be, we're just gonna be communicating with the power of our minds. Anyway, the anonymous time traveler has a warning about the future president, which he says will be enough to get him killed for relaying. He says that the year 4932 is a time and a world that many people listening to would not relate to as ideal, and that time as a traveling journey has destroyed future ambition. He says that humanity no longer seemed to pursue progression. He also claims that years are mysteriously falling off the calendar. He said that when attempting to journey to a future year that they'd previously journeyed upon, our error notes return to the period classification as unavailable. This suggests that the future is changeable, and with that logic, he assumes that the past is too. His message warns of the assassination of a president, Janu Oliver Beck, in July 2084. Janu, by the way, is supposed to be born in September this year, so watch out for that. The time traveler says he must never be elected because he must never be assassinated. Apparently, the president was also a philosopher before taking office, and he managed to prove the existence of a god. The time traveler said if we preserve his philosophy, we will preserve for the future of humanity. He ended the message by saying a number sequence, 16, 8, 4, 4, 8, 4, 4, 4, 8, 8, 4, 8. Now this has stumped Apex TV viewers. The video has had over 2.6 million views and none of them know what the weird numbers at the end mean. Coming into number nine, we have the Great Awakening in the Age of Aquarius. On November the 26th, 1977, a scary alien voice interrupted a British TV broadcast at 10 past five in the afternoon on ITV. Hijacking the Hannington transmitter, a scary speaker interrupted transmissions for six whole minutes, claiming to be an alien called Virillan from the Intergalactic Association. With a distorted voice, Virillan says that all weapons of mass evil must be removed. He warns humanity that they have a short time to learn how to live together in peace. The voice implored viewers to remain peaceful so that we could be part of the Great Awakening in the Age of Aquarius. The hijacker was voice only, and later ITV called the hijack a breakthrough in sound. Now, the identity of the hijacker has never been found, but afterwards, tongues were firmly set wagging. A lot of alien conspiracy theorists hailed the interruption as a message from aliens of the future who have mastered the ability to send messages through space-time. Coming into number eight, we have the drunk traveler. Do you know what? I might try this one. In October 2017, police officers in Casper, Wyoming apprehended a drunk who claimed to be a time traveler. This self-confessed time traveler had a message of warning too. Now this warning wasn't beer and liquor never sicker, which is a shame because I think he could have used some advice there. His warning actually said that aliens will arrive in the year 2018 and cause havoc. The drunk man said that he was from the year 2048 and he was able to time travel because, and I quote, aliens filled my body with alcohol. All right then. Coming into number seven, have we been sent a message from the future from a nearby star? Okay, when are we gonna stop naming our star's insane letter combinations? This star is HD164595, which really isn't very catchy. This star is a G-type star 94.35 light years away from Earth. In 2015, we seemingly received a message from something in the vicinity of this star. The signal was only heard once by the Rattan 600 radio in Russia. It was not reported to the rest of the world until 2016. Now, the announcement came as part of the Breakthrough Listen project, which is now scanning the nearest 100 galaxies for transmissions. This star has been of interest to humans because it is in a habitable zone. A lot of theorists are suggesting that the message could be from a future form of humanity or even aliens. Coming into number six, we have Noah. Ah, Noah. What a guy. He made headlines in 2017 when he he appeared in several news publications and in an interview with Paranormal Elite. Noah claimed to be from the year 
2021, but apparently he'd been to the year 2120. It seems that Noah isn't his real name, it's just a name used to protect his identity. The man said that he was 50, but he'd taken secret drugs to make him younger, so he appears as a 25 year old. Good. Great. In a video for Paranormal Elite, he says his sole objective was to prove that time travel exists. He said that it was invented in 2003, but was only used by top secret organizations. Time travel was then publicly released in 2028. He said that he works for the government in 2021, but unfortunately, he's been fired, meaning he can't get back to his time. He says that flying cars exist in 2021, and people love virtual reality. He also says that in 2021, the US president is still Donald Trump, and that the sky is red with global warming in Las Vegas in 2120. He also claims that North Korea is a huge threat to the world in 2030. Coming into number five, we have John Titer, who had some worrying words for America. John Titer claimed to be an American military time traveler from 2036, and he wrote on a number of blogs and bulletin boards between 2000 and 2001. He started with the Time Travel Institute forums. John's words were so impactive and garnered so much attention that countless works of literature and music have been inspired by them. His story is long, so I just want to give you the cliff notes. He basically says that the USA breaks up into five smaller constituents as a result of civil war. He also says that humans create a miniature black hole and that World War III would be erupting soon. Although his message very much panicked people 18 years ago, a lot of the things that John said would have happened by now haven't yet happened. He explained at the time of his warnings that the future is changeable and a lot of people think that by spreading his warnings in the first place, he actually created a new timeline of events. Some people were so wrapped up in his narrative, they created the John Titer Foundation. Up next, a lot of people think that our next warning from the future also came from John using a different name. At number four, we have the Y2K bug scare. A lot of people pinned down the Y2K scare to a number of faxes received in 1998 by Coast to Coast AM. Basically, a lot of people were concerned that come the year 2000, computers would just break down and all hell would break loose. An anonymous time traveler faxed into the show saying that Y2K is a disaster and that the government had to take control using martial law. The time traveler wrote in by fax, which, yeah, cool, I'm sure we definitely are still faxing in 2034. The time traveler warned that people suffer in the future because they forget their basic survival skills, and you know what? I can kind of see that. As we know, the Y2K bug didn't happen, but some people were super scared. Coming into number three, we have a 2016 computer virus. In December 2016, swathes of people around the world reported a scary computer malfunction that they assumed was a virus. People's internet browsing or Netflix viewing was interrupted by text from a man who said he was from the future. The text was patchy and mismatched, but eventually, through crowdsourcing, it was pieced together. The full text claimed to be from a man who said that he was a chrono-quantum technician whose work had been banned. He said it was because, and I quote, to prevent me from doing exactly what I'm doing now, at long last sending a warning to our ancestors. He said that humans are taking a path into darkness and it all began in the late 20th century when humans started accepting crimes and absolutely inhumane practices. He claimed all of the last four United States presidents were corrupt and blindsided people into accepting cruelty. Because humans were so stupid as not to realize what the politicians were up to, the hacker from the future claimed that we, your descendants, have lived in squalor, rancor, violence, and despair all of our lives for generations. Coming into number two, we have the unrecognizable humans of 2987. Apex TV interviewed this guy in Armenia. Now he said that he was employed by the Soviet in 1987. They wanted to send him and a group of fellow time travelers back in time to the 1600s. The machine that they invented was allegedly called the History Corrector, and it was designed to send people back to correct mistakes made in Russian history. The only problem was, they found they couldn't send people back, only forward. As a result, the man was sent forwards in time by 1,000 years to 2987 using a special watch. He said that 
in little under a thousand years, people are unrecognizable and almost mechanical. They're covered in devices and strange clothing. He said that people don't move, they levitate and apparate. He said that people are busy and emotionless and unhappy. He said that there are only four countries that exist, the Asian Federation, the Soviet Union, America, and a mysterious country called RA. Good news though, people do travel to Mars and it's supposed to be really lovely in a thousand years, so get me there. Finally, bad news for you guys living in the City of Angels because LA is going to be underwater in the year 5000. I really feel like Busted called it when they said that they'd been to the year 3000 and not much had changed, but they live underwater and then they met a really hot great granddaughter. It was great, it was a good time. Maybe they're the real time travelers here. Seriously though, one time traveler called Edward offered a scary vision of the future. Speaking Speaking to our mates at Apex TV, who else, Edward said that he worked on a top secret experiment in 2004 which allowed him to time travel to the future. He said that he arrived at a wooden city floating on the water where he met a man who informed him of the post apocalypse apocalyptic floods. He ventured into the ocean and saw the old city sitting at the bottom of the ocean bed. He said that the flooding was as a direct result of global warming and that many people had suffered from the loss of coastal city worldwide. He basically confirmed that yes, the polar ice caps do melt and so, so many people drown. Starting us off at number 10 is the underwater city. Last year, a man choosing to identify as Edward came out and said he was part of a top secret experiment that took place in 2004 in LA, which allowed him to somehow be able to travel through time. He said during the experiment he travelled 3000 years into the future and found himself in an unrecognisable city or so he thought. He said he was stood on a huge wooden platform but it wasn't just him, everything was made of wood, the buildings, the houses, absolutely everything. When he looked around more clearly he realised he was still in LA but underwater. Edward claims that humans become forced to live underwater after all the ice caps melted due to global warming. Well, near Nearly 70% of the Earth's water is locked in ice caps and glaciers, so if all that melted, it is plausible. But what's not plausible is humans as a species evolving to survive underwater in the short span of 3,000 years. Either way, he also had photographic evidence of this underwater LA in the video, which I mean, is it Photoshop? Is it not? I don't really know. Coming in at number 9 is the radio announcer. So this one is a bit of inception because this one took place in 1945, which is now the past, but the man speaking was from the future, but the future he's talking about is technically our present. But anyway, back in 1945, a British radio host garnered a lot of attention when he made predictions for the next 100 years. So he predicted life till 2045 and since we're in 2019 right now, we now know that a lot of his predictions actually came true. So much so that many believe his predictions were only this accurate because he was either from the future or someone he knew was. Here are his predictions. Man will set foot on celestial bodies like the moon and Mars. Half correct. Big companies will know no longer have a monopoly on news and entertainment and people will be able to access it anywhere. 100% correct. TV sets will get smaller and smaller to the point they can fit on our wristwatches. I mean we can watch shows on our phones but not our watches yet so I guess half accurate. He also said cameras will be at every street corner for safety but it will soon diminish our freedom which I'd say is 100% accurate. He also made some other predictions that haven't come true yet but I mean we still have 26 years to make them happen so here's to hoping. At number 8 we have harmonious living. Back in 2017, an anonymous Greek man claimed he was sent to the year 3207 as part of a top secret Greek military experiment. He asked more about the experiment but his question was denied and he was told no one was allowed to ask any questions. That's usually how these things go. He accepted their proposal because he was promised a better job afterwards and $100,000. Yet when he realised the gadget they were going to use had only been used in theory, he tried to back out and they wouldn't let him. They said he had 11 minutes to be in 3207 or he'd get arrested. When he woke up in the future, he said the buildings he saw were gigantic. He described it as five or six Empire State buildings on top of each other. Cars were flying, grass wasn't green, it was a deep purple colour, but the strangest thing was the people. He saw humans walking with aliens, walking with massive animals, humans that had unnatural looking skin, robots, and everyone was just living harmoniously. He even saw a family of aliens play with a huge dog in their garden, and I know it's hard to believe, as does this man, he was like, I could 
barely believe it myself, so I don't expect you guys to believe it either. He said there were massive generators surrounded by neon blue light, and he figured that they were energy producing because all the flying cars were surrounded by the same light. See, this is the kind of future I can get behind. Filling our number 7 slot are better decisions. So Apex TV uploaded a video back in 2017 featuring a man claiming to have come from the year 2250. The man said he was born in 2215, and in 2250 he travelled back to the year 2017 to help us make better decisions for a better future. See, I told you this list was a mixed bag. But he says by 2050 there will be a massive global food shortage because of overpopulation, which I totally believe it's completely plausible. By 2098 he says rising sea levels will displace millions of people because of the overpopulation and less land available to live on and he recommends self sustaining underwater cities as a solution which actually is in line with what Edward said earlier. He says by 2168 microbial life will be confirmed to exist on Saturn's moon Titan and that no we are definitely not alone in the universe. He says the reason we never make much contact is because these alien civilizations usually wipe themselves out before becoming too advanced. One good thing is that by 2250 he says that the life expectancy is 120 years old and then goes on to say we can do better than that. See I like an optimistic time traveller. Now at number 6 is the park man and I titled it park man because this is literally a guy in a park telling his story and I have no other information about his identity. He goes on to share that back in 2004 he was sent to the year 2100. At that point he said time travel into the future was developed but they had not yet figured out how to time travel into the past. Like many people on this list the first thing he warned us about was the imminent doom that will be caused by global warming if we don't switch to clean sustainable energy as quickly as possible. He then went on to say by 2100 we have multiple bases on Mars which is really promising to hear. He warns us against overpopulation just like the previous men did but to combat this many people are being sent to live on different planets. He named Mars as one of them but didn't name the others as a precautionary measure as to not drastically affect the future. He said him as well as many other time travellers are in danger every time they speak out because people in the future have ways to eliminate all of them. They have ways of wiping them out completely as if they never even existed. He goes on to add that technology becomes so advanced to the point it's actually scary and the second imminent threat to us after global warming is artificial intelligence. Go figure. AI in 2100 is smarter than any of us even dream to ever be and it's so funny because even saying all this leaders of the world are still barely doing anything to battle climate change so against AI we really just don't stand a chance. Coming in at number 5 is the alien. A man or being named James Oliver insists he's an alien stock on earth and that he has no idea how long he'll be here for. He claims he's an alien time traveller from a different planet who's sent on a mission in the year 6491 but due to the super blue blood moon interrupting transmission on a ship he became stranded on earth. When asked where he came from he doesn't name the planet but says it's further away from the sun than the earth so their years are a lot longer than ours. The only information he gave us was saying that the Yellowstone super volcano is going to erupt very very soon and devastate the whole of America. He says the amount of ash it will throw into the atmosphere will turn the world upside down. Our transportation mechanisms just won't be able to handle that much ash so both our planes and cars would just cease to work. I have no idea what would happen if transportation became that hindered like I can't even imagine it. But also that was his only take on the future and honestly even I could have told you about the dangers of Yellowstone. Anyone who knows anything about physical geography could have told you that so I don't know if I believe you Mr Oliver. At number 4 is Noah. I feel like Noah is probably the most well known time traveller of this time. I feel like I've heard about him so many times which is not even funny. I saw the first video he was on on Apex TV where he was very visibly disturbed whilst telling us about what was about to happen to us in the next few decades and last year he came out with even more information so thank you Noah. Noah claims his present time is the year 2030 but he came back in time to warn us about the future which all these people seem to be doing. He goes on to say he's actually 50 years old but took an age rejuvenating drug to turn him into a 25 year old. He goes on to say he risks his life every time he tells us about the future but still continues to do so. Our modern superhero. And these are some of his predictions. Trump will be re-elected, robots will run our houses, humans fly to Mars in 2028, the same year time travel becomes public. He said in 2030 the granddaughter of Martin Luther King Jr will become president even though she'll only be 21 at the time. And the law is that the president must be 35 or older but a new law gets passed hence she's able to become president. Many were skeptical of Noah's claims so he actually took a lie detector test and was asked questions about all his predictions as well as things like are you an actual time traveller from the year 2030 and every single thing came up as true. Either way none of these years 
videos are that far away, so we'll soon find out if he was telling the truth or not. Filling at number three slot is Bella. YouTube channel Apex TV uploaded a video of a girl dubbed Bella who claimed she met a Belarusian physicist who cracked the secret to time travel, which is not an easy feat to accomplish. She said in the time machine she felt a sharp voltage in her body, everything then went black, and when she regained her vision, she saw anarchy. He sent her to the year 3800 and what she saw were corpses upon corpses, ruined buildings and robots causing the destruction. She even holds up a picture in the video that she captured while in the future. According to her, the blurry image shows a flying destroyed robot shooting lasers in front of some futuristic looking structures. Bella even claims she ran into one of these robots. She said, he had facial expressions, gestures, I want you to imagine a metal man, incredibly strong without the feeling of pity. Say no more Bella. Say no more. Literally because I already know who would win between me and that metal man and I can assure you it would definitely not be me. Now at number 2 is 2118. In Feb of last year, a man named Alexander Smith came onto the Kyle and Jackie O show saying he was sent on a mission to the year 2118 when it was 1981. Alex claims he was part of a secret CIA mission which was so confidential he couldn't even tell his own wife where he was going or the fact he was going at all. He just had to go completely MIA. He said he woke up in a hospital bed because he was found on the side of the road passed out. Everyone was asking why he was dressed so weirdly because in that time everyone only wears white. Which is really weird I feel. The coolest thing to him was the fact that all roads were just massive sidewalks because all cars were flying in the air. He added that we can plug music directly into our brains with wires and it's a type of music we can't even imagine. In terms of humans he said he saw a woman walking with a man with no legs so I think it's safe to say cyborg human relationships will become totally common. He also said aliens visit us here and there but don't tell us and said we already made contact with them ages ago, as in right now. On the bad side he goes on to say the greatest threat to humanity is global warming. Do you hear that Trump? Global warming. And finally, at number one is perfection. A man claiming he's from the year 3000 tells us about a life that frankly seems too good to be true. He says by the year 2500, most human minds would have been reverse engineered and uploaded to a new digital reality, and so we all exist in a simulated environment. And these environments start off quite fake looking, but eventually get so realistic they're better than real life. So it's kind of like the first few simulations are like the graphics of a PS1 game, but by the end, as they get better, it's like the graphics of a PS4, that HD. He adds that in these environments there's no pain, there's no disease, there's nothing in there that you don't want in there. By 2600 nearly every shred of information is online and giant computers take up most of the space on earth. Real physical people still exist but at a certain point they upload their consciousness and they can still move around in real life through robots. I don't know how that works but I mean I'm on board. And those robots also made superhuman abilities possible and available to everyone. E.g. me. At number 10 we have Andrew Carlson. This is what I'm talking about. You come from the future to make money baby. You want to strike it big because you know when everything is going to happen and how it's going to happen and then the money rolls in and you're going to be laughing. That is what this time traveler did. He came from 200 years in the future back to the year 2003 with only $800. Sort of an underdog compared to the rest of the big financial people on Wall Street. But he knew how to play the game. He made 126 perfect trades. This guy was batting 1000 and with these perfect moves he was able to turn $800 into 350 million. God that sounds like a dream come true. But you can't be that perfect. Andrew Carlson should have been a little less perfect because the United States Security and Exchange Commission wanted to have a word with him. And by wanted to have a word with him I meant that they arrested him and started questioning the hell out of him. This is when he started to spill his guts about his time travel backstory. He said he was from 200 years in the future and then started to try and make deals to get out scot free. He offered the cure to AIDS and some other tidbits. After the interrogation was done, he posted bail and then was never seen again. Probably went back in time to try and do this scam again without getting arrested. The story has since been called a joke, but that's exactly what the Illuminati would want us to think. They don't want us to start to think that time travel is real so we could do it for ourselves. Duh. At number nine, we have Paul Dianic. You fall into a coma and then you get a glimpse of the future. 
Was it real? Or was the world all just created in your mind? Well, Paul Yannick seemed to think that it was 100% real. The year was 1921 and this poor son of a gun fell into a coma and was lost in his mind for over a year. That is a long time to be locked away with your own thoughts. Some people can't do 15 minutes alone without messaging someone on social media. I on the other hand love my own thoughts because I love myself. Well, Paul came back to the land of the living and he was a little different. He seemed more secretive and he started to jot down a lot of his memories in a journal that he didn't tell anyone about. This thing was top secret. Prior to Paul's coma, he worked as a teacher and once he knew he wanted what was in his journal to go out to the people, he had one of his former students translate it. This was the first time that any other eyes would get a glimpse of what he was working on. It turns out when Paul was in a catatonic state, he was no longer in his body but he entered the body of a man named Andrew Northman who existed in the year 3906. His writings are online if you want to take a look at them, but I gotta say, Andrew Northman, it's not a very futuristic name. I would expect name to be like Zerblog Flurman or something. At number eight, we have the World Cup in 1962. You think if you were a time traveler, you might try not to be so obvious. I get that you're a time lord and the laws of man don't apply to you, but still be a little discreet. I mean, just look at this picture. Bro, you can't be taking your futuristic camera phone out at the World Cup when there's tons of other cameras around. Someone is for sure gonna see you. It's the biggest event in the world. But then again, does this guy care? He's just gonna jump in his time machine and then go watch another one of the world's biggest sporting events. At number seven, we have Adidas Marketing. You dig up a mummy from over 1,000 years ago, you expect her to have some leather shoes on or be barefoot. But the last thing you expect is to see her sporting some fly as hell red Adidas. Now I'll start off by saying these weren't exactly red Adidas but they were leather boots that look a lot like them. But my theory is that she came from the future with the Adidas. She became a sick warlord then inspired everyone to wear Adidas. It's really the most logical answer. At number six we have the Rejavak Time Traveler. It's 1942, the world is in the middle of the biggest conflict anyone has ever seen. Millions of people have died and everyone is so scared that they wear a diaper at all times because you could poop your pants at any moment. A photo was taken to capture some of the tension in the city of Reykjavik, Iceland. And what do we have here? There's a bunch of people scared, but then in the background, there's a dude on a smartphone. What is going on here? This guy's making some super secret call in his phone from the future, but there's no cell phone plans back in the day, so who could he be calling in this year? The thing that makes this time travel story so likely is that everyone talks about this when they talk about time travel. Go back in time and kill Hitler. Maybe that's what this guy was trying to do. At number five, we have 1941 going on 2020. This next picture is super strange. I'll start off by saying it is 100% legit. It hasn't been doctored or changed in any way. But back in the year 1941, there was a dude who dresses the same way I do. If I came home and saw this dude chilling on the couch, I wouldn't be able to tell if he was one of my roommates or just someone who walked into my home. There's no way that someone was dressing like that back then. I wish we could see the logo on his shirt so we could have a little bit more information as to who this guy is. Is. He's literally the only man not wearing a hat or a suit in the whole picture. At number four, we have Portal Jumper. How do you travel through time? Do you have to have a big machine that used to fly through space and time? Or is it a little watch that no one would even think is anything suspicious? Or do you just walk through a tear in the fabric of time and space? I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but this guy might know. Let's take a look at this clip at a potential time traveler. Now this kind of does look fake, you know, like it looks like it could have been edited in, but maybe this dude has unlocked the secret to jumping through space and time and that's how you do it. You just do a couple shoulder checks and then you do a light jog and Bob's your uncle, you're in a different time period. And number three, we have the Charlie Chaplin Time Traveler. This clip was taken from the Charlie Chaplin movie Circus. Who is that lady? Why is she walking around on a phone in 1928? Now there has been a lot of speculation as to what is going on here. At first glance, it does seem like this lady is talking into a smartphone, but she is dressed for the era, and some people think she could have been holding a hearing aid, which was brand new tech at the time, but it was still available. But I put her on this list because I'm obviously in the camp of this lady as a time traveler. Duh, she's talking to a smartphone in 1928. Of course, she's flying through time, duh. At number two, we have Noah. This one makes a little more sense. You have a dude 
dude who's from the year 2030 and he doesn't want anyone to know his name or face or even what his voice sounds like because he's worried about running to himself from this time and causing a paradox. And who knows what will happen if that actually goes through. I don't know, the world could explode or something. The thing that really got the ball rolling on this one was this video of him taking a lie detector test. Uh, let's just start off with the basics and uh, we'll see what the lie detector says. Uh, first off, uh, are you an actual time traveler from the year 2030? Yeah. He has asked a bunch of other questions, like if Trump will get reelected, and he says yes. And he also says in the year 2030, Martin Luther King's granddaughter will run for president and become the youngest president ever and the first black woman to become president. And he passes all these questions on the lie detector test. I understand that lie detector tests can't be used in court, but it's still pretty interesting that he's able to pass the whole thing. Or it could all just be some sort of thing to get us all worked up, and now we all fell for this guy's trick. And for the number one spot, we have Edward. This guy claims that he was working on a time travel project in 2004. He went far into the future, and I mean hella far, like way past any of the other people we had on this list. He flies all the way to the year 5000, and he came back with this picture. That is Los Angeles, and I don't know if you can tell, but the whole place is underwater. That really ruins the fun beach weather that you want to enjoy because there's literally no beach. It would seem that we didn't do a very good job of controlling climate change, and most of the world that we love got submerged. Well, you better invest in a houseboat now. That is the only answer. Mm -hmm.